first of all, I'm, I'm Lebanese, and so we played a darbuka in our family, like a, a, a goblet-shaped drum. You know, I would play for parties and grow up and play drum set and started gigging on drum set as a young guy, 12, 13 years old. You know, little gigs, nothing much, but we used to rent the Knights of Columbus Hall. I can remember the day I was in the studio saying, I could do a bunch of these things and make this track sound better. As a pretty young guy, maybe like 14 or 15, without having a whole lot of chops. I knew about maracas, and I knew about the darbuka, and I had different, you know, that's about it, a couple of little things. And then, um, as I got older and I listened to some of the jazz people had, besides having congas, the early Keith Jarrett music had Guilherme Franco, who was a Brazilian percussionist who was playing in his band. I started to develop an arsenal of those instruments, but I, I also didn't really have any, you know, technique, so to speak. It was kind of all homegrown, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I moved back to Cleveland and my good friend Skip Haddon, who was a teacher at Berkeley and who I knew growing up and actually you know, kind of mentored me in a way, uh, said, you might be happy to know that there's a guy in Cleveland named Ramnad Raghavan, who's a South Indian drummer, who was the original drummer with John McLaughlin's group Shakti. Okay. But you go on down there and check him out. So he was teaching at Oberlin, funny I teach there now, and he was teaching there and in, in Cleveland at Cleveland State. So I met him and he you know, entered into a small room and, you know, took his shoes off. It was, you know, the whole process of sitting on the floor and playing was new to me. And, um, and he asked me to clap and keep cycle for him. And it took about 30 seconds. I said, this is where I'm going to be. I'm, I'm hanging out with this old guy right here. Mm -hmm. And when he left that day, I carried his drums out of the room and I carried him around for the next four years. And then I went to India when I was 35, I think. I did with Raghavan for about four and a half years. I had a year and a half off of uh, studying with him, and then I, I went. And by that time, I didn't even think I was going to continue on with it, you know, at mm -hmm. all. And then I got a letter that said I got this grant. I said, holy man, I, I got this thing. I guess I'm going to go. Wow. Yeah. So how long was it, was the, the grant put you over? In it India was supposed to be for 10 months. Okay. And I bailed a little early to play in this thing called World Drums with uh, Nexus and uh, Trichy Sanker and Glenn Velez. A few of us got invited from the United States to the World's Fair in Brisbane, Australia, which had a World Drum thing with like 360 drummers from around the world. Was, okay. Actually, that in itself would change your life. It was pretty amazing. When you come back from that experience, uh, did you continue to study the things that you were learning there? Yeah. How did it, how did it shape what came afterwards when you got back here? It's, it's always a work in progress to integrate whatever it is you learn about any world music into uh, <clears throat> what we're doing today. Yeah. You know, but coming back, people were not interested in really doing that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they do things in South India we just don't do. They, they, uh, yeah, they, like we have the Pulse, they start playing, you know, you know, Quin, you know, they can play quintuplet time. What the people know about the people? Yeah. And phrasing for it. Yeah. 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 And it's not like I go home and listen to South Indian music, I don't. It's not heavy rotation at my house. Mm -hmm. It served me well. Yeah. Do you have any sort of like icebreakers for yourself when you go to a new culture? Have you found any things, you know, ways to get comfortable with new people in new cultures where you might not speak the language? Have you found... Hang Does that make out. sense? Hang out. Yeah. Hang out and just have a real open approach, to, and and just try to get the dance, see what people are dancing like, and try to hang out. And when Literally I was in, the dance. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I when I was in Morocco, you know, we we were listening to the music, and I mean, I I know uh, <clears throat> a lot of people who this, you know, I mean, it happens to everybody basically. They they put the downbeat in the wrong place because it's so strong on this one part of the beat, 
And um, so most people just like don't get it. But you know, they, but they're cool about it because they're grooving so hard. They just think you're playing another part of some other beat. And they don't know what it is and they're just like kind of cool with it. But in the end, you know, I was hanging out with these folks and they, as a group, they all looked at me and they said, Daka Sadaki. You know, I said, you know, wow, well, well, I thought they were saying like good night or something. You know, yeah. I didn't know what it was. And I said, Daka Sadaki. They said, yeah, Daka Sadaki, Daka Sadaki, Daka Sadaki. And that was how, that was where the accent went in the music. And, uh, and uh, everywhere go, we were like in right. there. Right, right, right. And so it was, and those simple things alone, I mean, you couldn't have written it or done any. I mean, just we love language and the language of rhythm and in the music is so uh, so wonderful, especially when people can share it with the mannerisms and you know it makes the hang just incredible. I mean, there's nothing else in life I really like more than doing that. I've never seen those before, uh -huh. and um, you did something uh, on the first day with those that uh, I wasn't expecting. You know, there's a lot of things in that piece that I wasn't expecting, uh, but it's kind of out of nowhere. You grabbed them and said, yeah, uh, where can I sit down on the floor? I'd like to play these on the floor. And so you went and sat in the middle of the room, and you had a, a group that you played with those. Yeah, I would say of all the stuff we did, I found that one to be the most challenging for me. Where's the beginning of the large pattern? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Uh, talking about counting and where people hear the center. What, what was the, uh, in Morocco, what was the, fr the phrase? Daka sadaki. Yeah, I needed something like that to kind of give me the center. Because right. uh, the what I felt is the heavy beat was actually not the downbeat, right? And uh, it really threw. It took every ounce of my you know, internal metronome to to really just force myself to count in a way that I didn't want to count in the beginning. And having that bass on the three is tough for me. Well, it's funny. You could have done it if I would have said it's a waltz. And I said, um pa pa, um pa pa, um pa, um pa, um pa pa, um pa pa. But you don't want to think like that because the way that everything else is revolving around it makes you feel because there's, there's a dotted feel that's in it. And there's all these other feels that are like, you know, making you feel you want to go with that or you want to go with this. And, and so you're, and the pivot point of it, which feels like it becomes a new one if you happen to just lose your strong mm -hmm. pulse it becomes the one and then everything becomes this place and it's kind of strange but you got like very good at it fast i'll give you a good one okay play it again from the intro <laughs> Was I off there? Or was oh, I? You were right. You were totally right. I mean, for me. <laughs> I mean, I, I know when it's you know you're you're trying to go down that road. I, mean, I I feel the same way. I mean, I you know when I'm with those guys, you know, when this come, we're talking about specifically a Bolaria a flamenco twelve beat pattern. You know, with, is that where this pattern comes yeah, from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What made you? Decide to do that rhythm and grab those to do. You it know, sounded, the, you know, the brushes, the room sounded good, and um, and I wanted to make a shape, you know, that had a longer form than just like a, you know, to to do, to to do, you know, just so I, you know, I just didn't want to make a rhythm that was. I wanted to have a longer form, mm -hmm. and so that's a longer form, and, yeah. you know, for you know, a, a groove, and there's pivot points in it that you could kind of gear towards and you know cadence to and uh and, and it's got a certain kind of um geometry that causes tension 
uh, and release over a broader period of time. Right. And it's nice. And, yeah. You know, that kind of, I mean, and it's tricky because, you know, you, I, most of the time, most people I know, very few people are good enough playing, you know, even with the right accent. There's just too much information, you know, that these, like in South Indian music, to really think you're going to play that music. It's like, you know, we, if you did something that was jazz oriented to those guys, like if you want, sing in the Bible, you know, and that's how we're going to end the song. You say, you know, they look at you and go, why? Like, how come? Why? Yeah. Like, there's no contextual <laughs> reason why that would be. They'd have to learn that whole thing. And it's good. That, you know, it was like, to us, it's like you go big in the Bible. Every the whole band just does it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so when you add, you know, three thousand years of unbroken history on some really inside stuff, think about what you're not getting. Yeah. There's a lot. Ready? One, two, three. Go. <laughs> Of all the things you could do as a project, you know, at this point in time, why are the drums? Well, the the I've always been fascinated with rhythm on the fiddle, and there's a technique that's been developing that which is strictly percussive based on the fiddle, and I've just been taken with it, you know, for the last. Got kidnapped. You know, I did. I, I pretty much did, and uh, I wanted to figure out how to keep on developing my concept of rhythm and get better at it so I can apply uh, you know these things to my playing and it's also uh, it's an unconventional pairing uh, it puts me in a challenging situation and through that I'm finding that um, there's a lot of unexpected music that is being made just through the communication uh, that you know we're almost forced to make in a couple of days mm -hmm. and uh, you know some of it's tough some of it goes comes really easy and uh, but in the end it's a it's an amazing process and I, I feel good about you know spending this time together you know Rhythms are extensions of feels to me. 
Mm-hmm. No, of emotions, you mean? Oh, or? that too, but actually they're extensions of, you know, rhythm, you know, there's a, a, a certain feels that music have, you know, traditionally in every, every culture. And the, and the rhythms are extensions, options on the feels. We're counting it. And yet in Spain, they tell me that when you talk to the older guys about it, they don't, they, they're all shocked to know that people count it. They say, well, I never even knew you could count it. Oh, wow. It's like, you know, why would you bother? You know, this is how the music goes. Yeah. Which is so beautiful. I mean, it's yeah. really fabulous. So, and it's the same thing. They get a bad, boo, 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 boo. you know, like, why bother? You know, it's like, this is how our music goes. So we're contemporary people who are left the village, you know, and jumped yeah. the fence. And so the world, it's a dangerous place to be because, you know, you could forsake mining and refining so much that you really know so so well and uh so sure. it's 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 an interesting point that but for me i saw no other way because i really don't want to I don't have an interest of in being accepted into the South Indian music world. I have them think I'm cool or good or can play well. I mean, I like them to think I could play well, but I, I don't think they'll ever think I play their music well. Right. But their music has certainly informed your choices immensely, you know, and, and, and shaped the way oh, that, yeah, yeah. The way that you play. Yeah. I mean, I think the value in studying, you know, uh, uh, trying to understand the timing so all those kinds of things has a value. It's all to the good. Yeah. Because, you know, you think you know, um, you think you know about rhythm. You know, and then all of a sudden you're playing with somebody. I mean, I was playing with Trichy Sanger, and, and we're, he's, again, the South Indian Bratanga player, we were playing, and, you know, his got so much love to give when he's playing, he's looking at me. And, I mean, I never play this music. I'm playing Hijini drum. I never play this music as well as, you know, as when I was with him, you know, because he just, he just, you know, he hears yeah. and he understands. He's a master, you know, yeah. so it's like incredible. And so it came a point in the concert where we were like playing and we were playing, you know, some, you know, it was advancing into the like, you know, the the levels of time. And he decided that it was time for him to solo mm -hmm. and that I'm, this is where you get out of the car. He's like, boom! He's like, you know, he just like. <laughs> Here I go. Yeah, he just like, he took it to a place I couldn't go, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was powerful. Well, I certainly appreciate all your time that you gave to these last two days and all your energy and, you know, musical contributions and, uh, you know, uh, help with uh, rhythms when uh, I was struggling to be able to count what was happening. I had a great time and uh, I learned a lot and I think we made some really uh, great music too. Really ended up collaborating together, putting some pieces together. Totally. And yeah. Well, it was a lot of fun for me. Yeah, well Case, you're you know, you got a great heart for it and for wanting to bring us all together and do this kind of thing. I've seen you over the years, you're you know, you you wear it all well. Yeah, so, thank you. Yeah. And not a lot of those experiences that you've been part of it, you know, they're they're not wasted on you. You you're kind of we you know, you're regurgitating them out with a yeah. real sense of you and so that's a that's a you know that's what you dream for yeah well i treasure those experiences certainly I yeah do. yeah so well thanks for being part of this one jamie bless and you thank you for having me thanks man i really appreciate it